What is happening, sports fans? It is your main man, Matt, from the DFS 5-pack. Rocking it solo Monday, July 19th. Ryan is busy doing some personal training stuff, so you got me solo. I'm happy to be home, back from vacation, back from wedding in Michigan, back in lovely Solon, Ohio, ready to crush this slate. Uh, just did members only, broke that down into two videos. That was accidental, but ended up working out pretty good. And now I'm ready to talk out the main players I like tonight for cash games and tournaments. Um, yeah, let's just dive right in. All right, so pitching options aren't great tonight, especially with weather concerns in the San Diego Atlanta game. And although he's too expensive at 9K, I just feel good about Kyle Gibson here and one of the better spots on the slate. Good pitching park in Detroit against the Tigers. Again, more solid than spectacular, but on a slate where that seems to be the case for pretty much everyone, I like Gibson quite a bit here. The salary doesn't really matter. He is too expensive, as I mentioned, but with cheap hitters all over, not too worried about it. And again, I don't think he's going to crush the slate and give you like a 35 plus point performance here, but I do think I feel pretty good about that 18 plus that he's averaging, uh, you know, in his starts this year. Again, this just comes down to the other pitching options, a good spot in Detroit against the Tigers, and the ability to afford him. Uh, again, on many slates, I would not be looking here at 9K. He's too expensive. But on this particular on this particular one, he is high on the short list. I wouldn't call him must or anything, but again, high on the short list in all formats at 9K. Let's talk about some hitters. So three outfielders. Outfielders loaded tonight. Bunch of good outfielders all over the place. I'm going to talk about three of my favorites. But first, talk about a guy I never thought I'd bring up again on the DFS 5-pack, Alcides Escobar. Very light hitting shortstop for the Royals in their World Series winning days has been shipped off to Washington and has seemed to find the fountain. It seems to have found the fountain of youth leading off for this Nationals team. Homered and hit the game winning single yesterday. You can see he's got multiple hits in three out of five, three out of six, excuse me. He's got upside in a bunch of those games. I mean, look at the game log. The dude just looks good right now, seeing the ball well, locked in at the plate, went opposite field for a bomb last night, late in the game yesterday. Again, leading off for this Nationals team at 3,400. Kind of the cog in the machine type. I like him a lot in all formats. All right, so one of my favorite tournament bats on the slate, any actually in any format, is going to be Michael Conforto. So I like the Mets a lot against Vladimir Gutierrez. Conforto, walk-off home run last night, or yesterday, excuse me, double digits in three or four. He's starting to lock in. And Conforto is a notoriously streaky hitter. So when he's starting to get going like this, now's the time to hop on. I like him a lot as a one-off in a Mets stack. Either way, he's one of my favorite bats on the entire slate. Moving on up to a guy on the opposite side of this game, Jesse Winker. Should be, will be probably the highest owned batter on the slate, and it makes sense. Cross spot for the Reds against Jared Eikhoff. They're getting a ton of love. Winker being their best hitter this year, right there with Castellanos, I would say. And he's not 4,200, so his price has dropped a little bit. He had been in tough matchups. Now against Eikhoff at 4,200. Again, he probably will be the highest owned hitter on the slate, and it makes sense. I would say play him in cash games and fade at your own risk in tournaments. Nothing wrong with just plugging him in in GPPs. All that being said, it's not like he's tearing the cover off the ball right now. He's ice cold, no extra base hits, re no extra base hits recently. So the more I look at it, the more I understand the fade in tournaments. In cash games, I think he's still just playing. Another outfielder, I would say this is a, a more of a tournament play, even with Tampa getting a lot of love. Kiermaier is never a guy that gets a lot of ownership hitting towards the bottom of this race lineup, but he is locked in right now. Double digits in three of five, you know, high double digits at that. It's not like he didn't do anything in the other two games. He's two steals in back-to-back -back games, or he has a steal, two steals total in back-to-back -back games. He's got decent power for this price point. Tampa is in a really good spot against Spencer Watkins in the Baltimore bullpen. They're going to get love. But like I mentioned, I think Kiermaier might get left behind a little bit, hitting towards the bottom of this lineup. Or if he gets moved up today, which I could see with how hot he is and knowing Tampa has no problem switching things up, then he becomes one of the better value bats, one of the better value bats in the entire slate at 2,700. We'll just have to see what this Tampa lineup looks like when it comes out. Either way, I like Kiermaier a lot. Might be just a tournament play, might be a play in all formats, might be just a cash play. We'll have to wait and see. Either way, again, guy I like a lot uh, in a Tampa stack that's surely to get a lot of love in a really good spot. That is what I got for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed it. Fast and Furious, wanted to get this out for you guys. I know it's getting a little bit late. 
Um, that's all I got for you guys. If you want more videos, more content, more write-ups, any of that stuff, more me, more Ryan, check out the DFS5pack.com. And, uh, yeah, give us a look. We'd appreciate it. Thanks, as always.